hey Z friends, it's Pio. And at this point, you probably is a Z maniac right now, and we need to learn a lot more with Master Z. So let's step into the level three, talking about Zoe. You were presented to a piece of the Zoe project right in the beginning when you installed the Zoe Explorer, but it's much more than that. Talking about the Zoe project, it's hosted by Open Mainframe Project under the Linux Foundation. It was uh, created with three major projects that aim to bring together development tools to the infrastructure world. So, allowing us to get much more productive, make use of uh, a world of cloud web development tools that are available. Together with that, we, we not just get more productive, but making use of familiar tools that developers and professionals they are used to to make it easier for them to get started with the main thread. They don't need to get worried about learning the tool because they have something they are familiar with already, but they can go direct and focus on the main frame, on the architecture. As I said, uh, Zoe uh, started with three major projects and two of them are running on the mainframe instead of the L part. The first one, the web application framework, it's a web desktop. It, it lets you connect to your mainframe, to your L part, through an experience that is equal to what you have on any desktop. So, you know, it's Windows, it's a good interface. You have uh, Angular, React, web applications running on the L part. Also, 307 emulators, terminals, some explorers, and all of this is provided by uh, Node.js, an express uh, application. So you just have to open your browser, access that, and run and use. So it's basically uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. No tools, anything else is needed to install and get uh, and get started. We have also uh, the API Magician layer is also running inside of the mainframe and it's based in another two open source projects for Netflix, so Zoo, Eureka, and it works like uh, a gateway for APIs, for your APIs. Uh, you can have just uh, a, a, a base URL for all the APIs you have on your machine, just a single point of control, a single point of security for you to handle, so to administrate, so making your life easier and get from your developers also. And the last one that we are covering here in this video, the Zoe CLI, uh, it's a Node.js application that's running on each user machine. So you just have to go there, install uh, the Zoe CLI and start using that on your laptop. And it makes use of uh, the ZOS, the core function that we are talking here, it makes use of the ZOSMF APIs so it exploit that, so let it us uh, work with jobs, with data sets, uh, USS, uh, issue comments for console, TSO, all kind of tasks from just from our machine, just for our laptop, from our terminal. And you don't need to go connect with multiple uh, helpers, you have just everything in a single place and issue the comments from whatever you want. And uh, a part of this friendly uh, interface for developers, uh, it also has some help function, we're gonna see that here. Uh, as it is a shell command, you can just issue that on your terminal. You can integrate that with automation tools for your, continuous, uh, for your continuous integration, for your DevOps scenario. For example, let's imagine that you were working with a repository on GitHub for Cobol, and you have to upload files for your mainframe, the code, uh, run these programs, everything. You can start everything from your Jenkins pipeline, from our Travis pipeline, and uh, there are much more than what we are seeing here, right? Uh, we are focusing here just on the core functions, but there are also other plugins that were created by community members, uh, for example, uh, to talk with Keeks, DB2, other, other mid-war softwares. Uh, the Zoo Explorer is also an example of a tool that was built on top of the Zoo CLI. Now it's, uh, it has your own squad inside of the Zoo uh, community, but it started on top of the CLI. So talking about this challenge, on the Zoo challenge, 
you are now dealing uh, with Zen. So it's another kind of data set, it has a different organization, uh, there are much more for you to learn about that, and it has uh, better performance, but with all that we need another way to work with that, and for that on this challenge they are using, we are using ID Cancel. I will add here a link for you if you are willing to learn more and take more advantage of this challenge, but let's go and focus on the Zoe CLI right now. One great thing is that you can just start typing and press enter or if you type something wrong that will let you know that it's wrong and you can help. On the help here on the terminal you can look at uh, the options available, uh, what are uh, the forms, the global options. There is also this help web option. This is cool. It's like uh, the documentation I have on the internet, but it launch a web help in your browser. That is just the options you have available on your installation. So you can navigate through them, find the examples, the documentation about that comment, and you can just search. So for example, you're gonna need to work with design. So here's the thing. So take that, look at the examples, and just go to your channel. Okay, let's clear this. So let's start listing the files. So I use the Zoic files list data sets and pass a filter, a high level qualifier, a mask to get the answer from our offer. So you see all of the data sets I have allocated with my ID here. Uh, what about if we want to create? We just go to create PS because we want sequential and we don't need uh, to worry about the farms. Then look, I use this flag PA, so it, it shows me the flags I've used for that. If I just uh, list again the files and use the grab, just to verify the file is allocated. There we go, it's allocated. So, cool. Uh, let's start uh, with some kind of hello world here for some JSON. So I will just create a file here just to uh, include my job card. Uh, include my step and I will just execute the IFDR14. Okay, it's really a hello world for the JCI. Okay, so now now let's just cat here just to see uh, if there are okay perfect. So now let's use the Zoe commands to upload this file. So use files upload file to dataset and just pass the file that I want to use. So while the process is happening, we see uh, this status, the file is uploaded with success. So now let's use the Zoe jobs, another comment. Let's take a look on the house. And we're gonna use that uh, to see me. But you see here, there are other options you can use, so just explore there later. So I will use uh, the submit and uh, the submit there are some other options so I will use the help and I see here that I can submit a job uh, from a data set, from a file on my machine or just from the SDN for example. So let's use the Zoe job, the Zoe job submit from data set and to get started let's just first uh, issue these comments we're gonna see uh, review about the job ID but we don't have written code it won't to the status and we don't know if that completed we can work with some other flags here for example we can wait for the output queue so uh, when this job completed we can see uh, the condition code we can see that status is that this is on the output uh, but you can play even more for example let's bring this output back so you can just meet and look here on your term, you know, the results of your execution. Here, uh, we are just going to display that in the screen, but you can save that output in a folder, local folder for you, um, in a file, in a text file, and you can use the response from JSON. So if you are going to work that inside of a programming uh, script, so that's easier. So use the JavaScript object notation. Mm 
there you go. You see that the answer is you have the attributes that you can work on. So good for programming. So another hello world now, but let's create a demo rack. Because uh, let's just use the say here. We're gonna display just a hello from Zoe. And that that will be our hex, our hello world in hex. So now let's upload that to the same file so you see and you ensure that I, I am up, really uploading the files to the mainframe as it's gonna be uh, overriding. So it's uploading, okay, success. Now we're gonna what we're gonna use to execute that, uh, we're gonna let's first clear, we're gonna use the TSO options to execute a rack. So Zoe, TSO, issue comment, and you're gonna work more with the TSO comments in the future challenges. Uh, the, the, this is great, right? You may need to work with scripts, regs, and other functions. There are numerous options uh, that you can use together with Zoe. So now uh, let's use the USS. Like I said, you can, you can call script. So let's issue a comment here with the SSH so I don't need to go type my user ID and password every time to create an SSH connection that everything is on my profile and I see the response uh, from the mainframe just using the Zoe USS and I can again use the graph here so I can see if there's some uh, demo in this in this display so everything gonna happen perfectly fine okay uh, we can use that with comments so console comments here we issue the DIPL info, but the comment can be bigger. I can just see just a piece of this comment, for example, just the device information. And I use grab for that. So that facilitates to debug some issues sometimes. And remember that the challenge that you need to find the file from MTM 2020 high level qualifier in which disk it was. So let's do that. Let's display the files, list them with the attributes and take uh, just uh, the high level qualifier and the volume. So we're gonna find on the answer what is the data set that resolved that first issue. And there you go. You can see that the volume just appeared on the public input. So this is another great example that you can uh, mix uh, functions from every part, every uh, tools you have and just just get better just put them to work for you stay now with my dog barking while I was trying to record for you bye bye and two of them <coughs> and two of them are running <coughs> and